Welcome to episode 80 of Slightly Unmeditated, a casual talk podcast about the WTFs of spirituality, self-improvement, and motivation with a lifelong delusional optimist who used to suck at meditation. I'm Tisha, and I'm very excited to have a equally enthusiastic guest with me today. His name is Kevin Carton. He is the co-host of the Science and Spirituality podcast, and you're also a spiritual life coach, right? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am super excited first to start with your story because um, I know a little bit that you went mm -hmm. to four years of college to be a pharmacist. Yep. And then you stopped doing that to pr pursue a spiritual life coaching? Yeah, it's not as clear cut as you just said it was, but that's basically the the okay. gist of it going from A to Z, but there's all those letters in between, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, I went to school for okay. the degree of pharmacy. It was a PhD program that I was in. I actually technically did not finish my mm -hmm. program because it was going to be getting a doctorate. But after four years, I got an undergraduate degree, but okay. I didn't continue on in the professional years. And that was honestly because I really felt that it wasn't for me anymore. And that was a good six to okay. 12 months of like a, like a depression I was in and questioning my path and doubting my heart really, because I knew deep down, I didn't want to be there. But at, at the time when I chose yeah. that career path, I resonated with it. I, I love science. I still do clearly, you know, <laughs> running the science and spirituality podcast, but, right. <laughs> um, I didn't, I, as the years went on, I realized that I didn't want to help people in the way that I was studying to help people because I started working at a community pharmacy right. and I would see the same people coming back again and again, month after month with literally the same issues. And we were giving them the same medications that mm -hmm. seemed like they were just treating symptoms rather than actually helping people heal or resolve their challenges at a deep level. And I, I just felt heartbroken about that as those months went on because I, I could see it in people's faces. I could feel it in their energy because I'm an empath and I could just sense that people were uh, unhappy with the solutions we were providing. They were uh, having the side effects of the medication and just not actually improving. It was more of a, it's like a Band-Aid, Mo most modern medications, many, many of right. them. So I, I don't disbelieve and I don't... Right. Um, uh, disagree with modern medicine, but I mean, heck, I again, studied in that field, but I think there's a deeper issue going on and that's what ultimately caused me to leave. But I didn't have in my mind that I was going to become a spiritual life coach, like right after school. I actually didn't know uh, okay. exactly what I wanted to okay. do. Yeah. So it started there. Well, in hindsight, it makes so much sense, like that road that you had to come to that realization of, wait a second, this stuff isn't working as well as maybe it, you know, it should be. Right. And then ultimately you go on a search to find what, what actually does work. That is exactly. such a compelling story. I'm so glad I asked. But I also have such a high regard for anyone. Of course, I, I have such a high regard for anyone who can say, this isn't this isn't working for me. Even if yeah. it's four years I've invested of schooling. Um, I only did one year of like real college before I dropped out and went to the Art Institute of Philadelphia because I knew that was for me and my grades proved mm -hmm. it and my like my um my whole life just felt better doing what I wanted to do. Uh, ultimately, mm. I didn't end up staying in the music business just because I didn't like the atmosphere. <laughs> so again, I had to make that decision to leave because it, it wasn't resonating for me. I, I couldn't deal with all of the, the drama. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. So how, how long until you discovered life coaching was a thing, or especially Always spiritual life coaching? Right. Yeah. I, I actually didn't have the words for it as spiritual life coaching. Um, I, I was aware already, actually, that it was a part of the, the push or what helped me make the decision to not continue in getting my doctorate and be done with a four-year degree because I was aware of coaches. Like I, I was connected with, or at least just on uh, an email list of Bob Proctor when he was alive and 
because he's a, a very success was a very successful coach. You can call a speaker, teacher, whatever you want to call him, but motivation or self development, things like that. And I was already reading books. Like I was doing my own self study for a good like year, year and a half, but I had discovered the whole field of coaching and that you actually even can become a coach literally the day after my last final in my fourth year in school. That's actually when I got connected with my mentor uh -huh. who I'm still working with right now. Her name is Mary Morrissey. And years later, it was about th four years later that I got certified through her company and got trained by her. Um, but that was my first introduction to this whole field of coaching that I invested in myself. So I, I right. hired her basically as my coach and then went off in that direction. Okay. So let's go, let's take a step back though. How yeah. were you aware as a child? You, you kind of knew mm. what your... You kind of had a, I have a feeling we have the same sort of story, but you kind of knew something else was going on, but it wasn't until later, like you said earlier, you didn't have the words for it. Right? Yes. Yeah. I'd agree with you with that. Yeah. I, I didn't have terms or like, oh, coaching, like, all right, that's something I could do. But like, I knew there was something more going on in the world than just what we see in our physical reality. Like I had, I had a deeper sense of that, but I right. didn't know how to describe it or speak to it because no one around me really knew were connected. So was that from like being a little kid? Vague, I have vague memories. I'll say of say like, here's, here's what I do say. If anyone asked me about my childhood and like, well, did I know, or was I tuned in or tapped into like spiritual, the spiritual nature of the universe? Um, I, I, for the longest time I could remember, I believed that everything happens for a reason, but not just any reason, but a good reason that we are learning through this process of life. And so I had this deeper knowing and a trust in life itself. Uh, I actually didn't even have the words like God or spirit or the universe. It was just like a knowing because I actually didn't even relate with the term God because I was, I was raised Catholic, uh, Roman Catholic or Christian. I don't even know the exact terms because like I'm not really, uh, that's not, I don't identify myself as religious, never did. But like hearing the words God, like I was like, no, that's not it. But now, I mean, coming back 20, 25 years later, like as I'm gro like growing up and maturing my awareness, I prefer the word God now to identify and, and conceptualize this whole power that's created all things. But I, I think I had that knowing at a young age, for sure. So I was raised Catholic, um, and that's what taught me that there's something right here where I went to Catholic school my whole life, and something was like very hypocritical. So I recognized that from a young age. But it wasn't until I read Abraham Hicks book that I was like, Oh, clarity, there's words for what I've always thought on paper, right in front of my face. And that was that sort of became maybe that was 12 years ago or something like that. And so I've wow. always now been aware of it. And then once I started doing the podcast, has totally changed everything. Like it's become my life. I understand now what it means to kind of live on your spiritual path. Um, and it's been a struggle, <laughs> of course. It's not easy sure. to live on this path. Um, but every single day it's become so much more clear, like, duh, how do we not all know this? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Right? So I'm wondering, like, I, I commend people who are coaches, because I don't know that I, I would have the wherewithal to not mm. be like, shaking people like, why? <laughs> right. Why is yeah. this not clear to you? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, Definitely. well, I'm glad. Exactly. So I often um in fact, your dream, um, dream builder program that you did, mm -hmm. was that Mary's program? That's okay. exactly it. Yeah, I, and I'm trained okay. to bring my clients through it. Right. So I actually looked it up because as soon as I hear of a new training, I'm like, maybe this one's for me. Um, right. And I read it, and then I, <laughs> and then I think, I don't know that I'm I'm in that line. Like I my I want to be the Mike Rowe, like the dirty jobs of spirituality. <laughs> like I want to learn about everything, what everybody does, and. I keep shorting myself and thinking like, well, I don't know. And I keep forgetting like this podcast has meaning too, like bringing yes. new people to the table to introduce new ideas. And I think that's where my place is. I just keep forgetting where my place mm. is. 
So I yeah. love, I love how relatable you are, um, on your podcast and on your Instagram page. Like, that's a talent, and I I don't I have that. that talent yet. <laughs> uh, you are maybe really, see it from really really a different perspective. Thank you. I I appreciate that. But I'd say I'd invite you to see it from a different perspective because I feel like you're relatable right now on this podcast. And I imagine the other episodes that you've recorded, like, yes. Oh, I'm totally relatable. I get that. I'm <laughs> talking about like the social media thing. So, mm. so that's the thing. I can be myself on this podcast. I can be myself yeah. and it's never been an issue. I turn the mic off not now, but in the past, I've turned the mic off and then I'm back into overthinking and not, you know. So I actually started listening to what my guests are saying and actually doing what my guests are saying. And nice. then shit really turned around, right? I bet. So yeah. I also have a life coaching. Yeah. <laughs> I also have a life coaching podcast on this channel with a life coach. And so I literally have been life coached for the last eight months every week um that has taught me about ego overthinking and i got rid of that uh, pretty well i'm doing really well with it and Very nice. holy shit life has just completely changed mm. so i feel like you feel like that too like you live on your path you don't just preach it you practice it too yes and and i want to just really speak to something that's uh, i find Something that's not often talked about in this whole conversation about being authentic or sh being relatable or um, actually showing up and doing the work is that even those who teach it struggle with it, no matter mm -hmm. what. Right. I, I believe it right. just diff to differing degrees, maybe, but it's still we go through this. Like you, just as an example, you mentioning about how like it seems like on my social media on Instagram I'm very relatable. Yes, I, I definitely agree with you on that. And I'm very proud to say I, I am that way. And I still struggle with sometimes, mm -hmm. like there are times in my life where like, there'll be a, like weeks at a time where like, I'm not posting or I feel inauthentic because, and so therefore I don't post. And it's because I'm in my own journey of self-discovery. So. Uh, it's, it's exactly why I love, why I wanted to talk to you so much, because I see mm. that in you. I come on the show and I'm like for life coaching, especially I'm usually the example. I'm usually like sure. the living example of here's all the bad things that, that I'm going through. So how do we turn this into a life coaching episode? Nice. I don't know why that worked out that way, but it's been such a blessing to me because now I'm like just spilling my guts on a global level <laughs> mm, and it, yeah. it holds me accountable to doing it in my personal life as well. Right. It's awesome. Yeah. So I think that's why more of us are becoming vocal and doing our podcasts and being called to be these like th the face of, of this um, now because people need relatability. Like, yeah, absolutely. I can't listen to every PhD and like, <laughs> you know how there's like yep. those spiritual snobby people so you kind oh, yeah. of feel condescended to even though they're supposed to not be that person <laughs> yep so it's... i feel like that's why us really why us go ahead i was just gonna say it's really actually a challenge honestly to have certain people in our life that we not only resonate with or like they're talking about things that we really want to hear but also that we feel connected in our heart center with that that it's like oh like i could i yeah. get you it's not like you're, they're talking from some pedestal. If you feel that run, that's my, my advice. <laughs> right. Right. But so I spent a lot of time feeling bad about myself because all these spiritually smart people were talking over my head. And then I started mm. feeling less than because I was like, I don't know what they're saying. So this mustn't be for me. Um, sure. In fact, not too long ago, I was getting so um, overwhelmed with everything my guests were saying and telling me I was doing things wrong. And then a psychic was scaring the shit out of me and all this other stuff was happening. And I just wow. had to stop and be like, 
I can't do any of this anymore. And I just kind of found my own mm. routine. And I feel like people get trapped because they can't live up to the expectations that like some of these spiritual people are setting for them. Does that resonate for Definitely. you? Definitely. A hundred percent. I see it all the time. Really. Yeah. Uh, that, And I honestly have had that challenge myself in my life because uh, my mentor I've been working with for eight years now. I, I have weekly coaching calls with her. It's more of a group setting, but still I study with her is what I, I say and I, I call it. And I do have like monthly coaching calls where I get to ask questions and engage and all that. But there are so many things that can be applied that if you try to apply all the things, it's too overwhelming. Like you try to, you're trying to be a robot basically and not a human. But uh, that's why for me, myself, after so many years of study, I've started to just uh, quote unquote, do my own thing. It kind of sounds like what you've been doing. It's just f discovering what works for me and sticking with that, not feeling like I have to like do all the things, wake up at 5 a.m., work out all the time, meditate 10 hours a day. Like, like I don't need that. It's simple things, taking simple things and applying them, then that is really where the rubber meets the road because you're actually being able to live more in a, like your, that lifestyle or actually making it sustainable rather than trying to like put more on top of yourself. It's like being yourself at that point. Yeah. Oh, right. So we're we're like everybody's preaching be off, but be your authentic self, be your true self. Don't like, don't break yourself down for anybody. And then they turn around and break you down because right. Like, I've always been an overly enthusiastic person. In fact, I sent you that email to warn you ahead of time because I had a feeling right. that I might go yep. off the rails with with enthusiasm, and so. I cannot tell you how many times in my life where I'm like so enthusiastic and like just so genuinely excited about stuff and to get shot down over and over and over mm. and over and over, then you're just like, what the heck? It doesn't stop me. I'm still enthusiastic, but I feel for people who are trying to be them, their true selves and then people are telling them don't do that. Right. <laughs> like it's such a yeah. horrible, horrible balance imbalance. I agree. Yeah, it, it definitely is a challenge and that's very prevalent in our world. But I think the really important point to come back to, and this, I'm still working on myself before I even make this point, I'm still working on this for me, is that there's so much access to information that we feel like mm -hmm. we need to consume it. But that's a choice that we are making. It's usually unconscious, right. like, oh, let me just open Instagram and go through 30 posts in five minutes. And then you feel overwhelmed with like, oh, man, there's all these different things that I, I should try out. But it's like, wait a minute, I'm the one who's consuming this. So I get to then filter out. It's like, does this oh, apply to me? Do I actually want to try this out right now? And actually let it go. Right. If we don't feel like it's like actually like necessary or actually helpful for our life, it's like, okay, just checking in with ourselves is like, how am I actually taking this in? Is this me trying to like put this on myself or is it me actually curious? Cause it's not wrong to actually like be going on social media or coming to a podcast to learn more, but actually be open and receptive and consciously make that choice rather than going and listening or going on social media and just uh, unconsciously consuming because then I find is, is where we get into that downward spiral of, oh, I should be doing this or that and so many different things when like that was a choice that we made. So we have to take personal responsibility for that for sure. Yeah. So I love that you said, because this is what I do, like when you're, you know, scrolling and you're sort of being curious about things and I know my limit, I know when I have to put it away, I can't do it. But I think you know, a good majority of people are just trapped. And then they're like, well, my house isn't yeah. that pretty. And my carpet look, doesn't look like that. My baby isn't that cute. And all this other stuff <laughs> that that gets in their head. And, and then we wonder why everybody's overthinking constantly. The right before we started recording the video um, on your Instagram, I the last thing I looked at was you talking about how you're not going to be posting on Instagram unless you feel like it, like you you didn't want it to be your job essentially. I I feel the exact same way, and I don't post very much socially. I have to promote the show, <laughs> but I hate that sure. part of it because I cannot mm. put anything out if it feels fake. Like I can't, yep. like if it feels too. forced or whatever, I can't do it. So I'm, 
I've literally this whole week been kind of thinking about that. You know, how am I going to grow the show? Well, then I have to do this. And I'm like, no, I don't have to do this. I cannot compromise, you know, yes. my not wanting to do it. So I'll share other people's work. <laughs> That's just the easiest way to do it. And then I'll sure. just show up every week and record. Like, that's my obligation nice. here. But you're the only person I've ever heard say that out loud. Wow. Right? Well, I'm glad I was able to say that for you to give you permission to agree with yourself that you already were feeling. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I mean, in the throughout the whole thing, you were saying that people just keep doing all these things they don't want to do because they feel, you know, pressured to do it. How do we yep. stop people from, <laughs> from doing that? Like, when is it going to shift? Everybody knows they don't want to do this stuff. And everybody yep. knows that social media is bad for their mental health. Mm -hmm. Are we just doing it because we don't know what else to do? No, I, I think maybe yes. There's a part of the answer to that. But have you ever heard or maybe even seen the documentary called The Social Dilemma? Yeah, I have. And That's, so my mind goes right so, there first. We become addicted to it. It's outside yes. of our control. Some of it is. I totally agree. I think of it every time I pick up my phone and it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm like, what am I doing to myself? Right. Um, I'm right. aware of that. I have an awareness yep. of that. Um, and so I just feel bad for people who don't have that awareness, who like do kind of get caught up in the algorithm. For sure. It, do, you do you recommend... Um, anything for your clients for that for like getting away from that just curious yeah definitely i mean if it comes up it's not always a focus but when it mm -hmm. does come up i mean first and foremost the, the conversation really is about how we're overstimulating ourselves so part of the answer and there's many different ways to go about this is to allow yourself or allow your nervous system to calm down and not be overstimulated anymore and that that could be a process of literally 10 minutes but depending on the level of overstimulation, it could take a day. And there's many different things to do to, to actually allow yourself to relax, your nervous system relax, mm -hmm. your mind to relax. It's like meditation, going out into nature, having an engaging conversation with someone actually in person. Um, there's many mm -hmm. different things we can do, but to get that overstimulation to just be more at ease because to think that you're just going to snap out of it instantaneously is not honoring the human experience. Because just by how our brain works, like when we're overstimulated, there's all this dopamine in our brain and we have to allow that to flush out of our system. And that takes time. You know, so I, I think a big message is not only to know what to do to allow yourself to relax, but also to give yourself the space to relax and forgive yourself. Because we get so caught up right. in more of the overthinking of when we realize it's like, oh man, I was just on Instagram for an hour. I was on TikTok binging all this stuff. And you start, we start beating ourselves up. And funny enough, the answer to getting away from that self-criticism is usually more overstimulation. We go back to the thing that we're trying to actually get rid of or to stop just because it's right. uncomfortable in that self-criticism. So a big like middle ground there is forgiving ourselves. I do this all the time because like I said, I'm still working on this myself. Oh, I totally am too. And again, I have to talk myself out of the scroll. I appreciate that you added the science part in there too about the dopamine hits in your brain. Um, the more I learn stuff like this, the more I'm able to forgive myself for things that I'm doing that I should know better in doing. So definitely science is helping me. Um, have you read the book uh, Why Woo Woo Works by David Hamilton? Ooh, I have not, but it sounds like a great oh. title for a book. You've got to read it. It it's so it's he is um I'm gonna mess this up really bad, but he has he's a PhD researcher all about about woo woo things, and then puts all the science to back it up behind it. Um, we did, nice. we also do a book review podcast every month and we did that one, one time before and it was mind blowing. So for a science guy, you've got to read it. It's amazing. I will. Thank you for the recommendation. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, I'm wondering because you're a spiritual life coach, how do people end up with you? Okay. So life coaching mm. is a little less woo woo than the spiritual life coaching. Right. Um, yes. 
are people already sort of on a spiritual path and then they come to you or do they accidentally discover you because they're out of options? It's actually, yeah, it's actually both. It shows up in that both of those ways and it, someone has to be ready. That's actually really how most of my clients come to me. Uh, whether they listen to my podcast or with my brother, or they just randomly find my website. I've had people that just stumble across my work, like whether it's Instagram, my website, or my podcast. And they'll say like, yeah, I watched one video of yours, or I listened to one podcast and I felt so inspired to like connect with you that I just had to. Like that, those kinds of messages happen a lot. And so it's not even sometimes just me like actually doing the traditional like marketing or offering my services. It just happens organically. But that a big part of it is because I'm sending that signal out through my energy, sending out a message to the infinite, to God, source, spirit. And since we're all connected through this one power, I send that message out like I'm ready to serve X amount of people this month or the next two, three months. And naturally, people will start to flow into reaching out, connecting with me. And it happens in that kind of organic way. And that especially speaks to the spiritual nature of my work because it's it's not in a logical way or very straightforward way, which can sometimes be confusing for some people. It's like, I don't know why I'm talking to you, but I just felt guided to. And that happens <laughs> all the time. So, <laughs> Right. We're, so like we understand that, right? So this is a constant battle yes. for me now because I'm so entrenched in this is my daily life. I, I live by synchronicities and signs. I chat up my spirit guides. You know, I do all of those things. Uh, two years ago, had you asked me that and I would be a, a flat, no way this is going to happen to me. Um and it became the most natural progression. It was a lot of work to get here where I am, but right, that's beautiful. My though. struggle now is is dealing with all the other people, <laughs> right? Because it's very mm. hard for me to connect to other like minded people in my area. It's yep. very small and already very close minded to begin with. So that that's been sure. my struggle for a long time. This podcast helps a lot because I'm meeting people we can have conversations like this, like, you know, how right. amazing these conversations can be. Um, so that does help. But I'm wondering, like people who come to you um, for spiritual, is, is it because they're trying to understand how spirituality works, or they're trying, or they're looking for like your intuitive guidance to, to find their way? Yeah, it's a not great psychic, question, right? It <laughs> Technically, we're all psychic. That's the truth. Um, it depends, though, yes, in true. terms of the openness you know of I mean? that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But no, I don't consider myself like a psychic and I don't provide those kinds of services. Okay. My work generally mm -hmm. is about people who have an awareness of their own spiritual nature, but it's the work of integrating their own spiritual awareness of who they really are mm -hmm. into their daily life in this physical human reality. That's a big part of my work right. because a lot of people are aware and it, just like yourself, it sounds like you are aware and now it's more of like, how are you navigating your everyday experience with these greater awarenesses? Because it can kind of seem like they're two different worlds and in many ways they are, yeah. but yeah. they actually come together in such beautiful ways. And that's why, I mean, like me and my brother, our podcast, Science and Spirituality, it's the marrying of the two. It's not either or. And I believe right. that we're meant to be more aware spiritually, but then also ground it in our human experience here and now, because why else are we here? If we were really meant to just live a complete spiritual experience, we would not be in this human reality. We would not have a human body. We would not have a brain to work with. We would not have this whole equipment that we can call an earth suit is what I like to call it. Because yeah. just like in space, you need a space suit to live. We have an earth suit for our spiritual nature to come through in this time and space. Yeah. Well, it actually helps me to have that visual of my little spiritual cartoony self like right here. And then the rest is just like yep. human body. Um, I don't yep, think of exactly. it so much. Yeah. I don't think of it too much that way, but I had to in the beginning. I had to like, you know, like in old cartoons where the little teeny tiny cartoon was in the head and they were like controlling yes. the body with the little, I can't think of what cartoon I'm thinking of, but that's how I, I had to sort of, either, of picture it. Yes. <laughs> I had to picture it like that for a while to like just get me over the, you know, cross over the threshold into different right. thinking. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
But the more I put into practice a lot of these things that I'm learning, and then suddenly it all came together like really quickly, like the, like the jigsaw puzzle sort of just like was magnetic or something, and it all came together. That's mm. where I am right now. And um, beautiful. I, so I want that for everybody else. That's why I think I would suck as a coach because I would be too aggressive about getting people right. <laughs> It's like wake up. <laughs> I have, yeah. Do you think that most people are? Have you ever had anybody? Lead, I'm just curious because I don't. I'm not a coach, so I'm curious how it works for you. But have you ever had anybody leave because they got too woo wooed out? Mm, that's a good question. I don't think it's happened for that reason. I definitely have had people step away from like they they invested in coaching or they're they're wanting to but then they felt like there was a repelling energy in their own system from me just showing up and making an offer and inviting I, that has happened but I, I think it's for their own from their own paradigms around like the fear that may come up or the uncertainty and because uh, going into this unknown space of connecting with who you really are and then learning how to live that into your life it's not easy like you said before in this podcast like it's challenging it is there's there's no way around that. Yeah. It's meant to be that way, I think, too, so that we can develop more as a soul. So it has happened in that way, but I actually don't think I've had someone be like, oh, that's way too like out there for me, which I, I think is a blessing. Like I, I'm yeah. very grateful to say that. But for other reasons, yes, people have been like stepped away and be like, no, this is not for me right now. Like, And a lot of times I feel it's like a sense of like, yeah, they, they don't feel like they're ready. So yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Like when we, when I started this, I didn't I had no idea what was coming, but I would not be where I am on my path had I not been doing it. This I've been it's basically a documentary of my spiritual journey for the last year and a half is what what ultimately has That's happened. Awesome. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. cool cuz I love documentaries. It's just I, it was so unintentional but so makes so much sense that Right. Now personally, have you ever had um, some crazy like manifestations or synchronicities or something that are so freaking on point that it weirds you out where you, where you start wondering where the line is between, uh, you know, <laughs> a little crazy and and maybe not? Yes. OK. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I um Yeah, I'll share one experience. Um, actually, Perfect. two, because one of them is a bit more whimsical. Yes. But the other is deeply spiritual, and it changed my life when this happened. So I'll go with the whimsical one first. So okay. um, when I, in 2016, I went on a spiritual pilgrimage with my mentor, and mm -hmm. we went to Bali, Indonesia. And it was a two-week pilgrimage. It was beautiful experiences, a lot of great deep teaching in the spiritual nature, but then also connecting with the the locals, the, the culture, the foods, and all that. It was awesome. And on the last day, it was Valentine's Day. Or one of the last days we were there it was Valentine's Day. And we were all getting together. It was like about 50 of us on this trip. And we were getting mm -hmm. together for a Valentine's Day dinner. And I already knew that this was happening. So I got like a, you know, I, had, I brought a nice button-down shirt, nice slacks, shoes, all that. But... One of my mentor's husband ha wears these really awesome bow ties and I was inspired mm -hmm. by him. I was like, you know what? I want a bow tie. I want to wear a bow tie for this, for this event. And so I, we had the hat, like the, the rest of the day off was like around like noon before the dinner at night. And I had this intention of manifesting a red bow tie because it was Valentine's day. So I wanted a red <laughs> bow tie, not just any bow tie, a red bow tie. Mm -hmm. And so I, in my mind, I'm like, all right, there's gotta be a red bow tie somewhere on this island, somewhere in the city that we're at. And so we were in a city called Ubud and I had this little moped that I rented and had a helmet and all. And so I went off and looking for a red bow tie. I spent a good three hours first visualizing the red bow tie, having it in my mind, because I again knew it had to be somewhere. And I went to every shop that I can find to actually, I mean, take action on creating that experience and having that red bow tie pop up in my experience. And after three, four hours, I gave up because I went to I had probably a good dozen different stores and they had regular ties that, that were red. They had bow ties, but they were all different colors, like black and gray and green, but no red ones. And I'm thinking in my head, like, 
I'm seeing all these different abundance of things, but just not right. the exact one I wanted. So right. I, I resigned and it was like, it's time to go to dinner. So I, as I was heading back, I, I had a problem with the visor on my helmet, uh, mm -hmm. that I, on the, the moped that I was riding. And so I just stopped by the rental place, exchanged my helmet, went back home. And I was kind of disappointed because I was like, I I've been studying this for years. Like I know that could have done it. So what was wrong? And after I got ready, I put on my re regular red tie. I was about to get my helmet that I just exchanged for the, uh, like on the moped. And I, on the back of that helmet was a, a sticker of a hello kitty with a red bow, a bow tie in her hair. So I started laughing out loud hysterically because I did it. I manifested the bow tie, but it just wasn't on me. <laughs> so the moral of that story, whenever I tell that, is I, I got what I wanted, but the reason I didn't have it on me, like that I actually didn't manifest the what I exactly wanted, was I was picturing the red bow tie in my mind, but I wasn't visualizing me wearing it. And so I got it, just not in the way I wanted it. Uh, okay, so how can people <laughs> not want to live like this? It is so fun, right? It to is. Just, it really is fun. Yes. <laughs> but I love that story. Um, I thought you were going to say like someone gave you one at dinner or whatever, but I think the Hello Kitty is even a better ending to the story. So I so appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. I always love telling that story because it's, Oh yeah, I'll get to the second story in a second, but just to ground the point, just remember it's like when you visualize, see yourself yes. in it. Like it's first person. It's not third person. You're not seeing it as a picture. It's like you're living it. So that's the moral of that story. But anyway, so second story. Uh this one's oh go ahead. I was just gonna point? thank you uh a million times for making that point about manifestation. Uh I have I've had to make some adjustments in how I do it. Be exactly based on that fact and i have a story but i'll tell you off air later that nice. is just so yeah. unbelievably crazy um but okay. that actually was the key to making things happen was um physically vi visualizing myself in it instead of the Beautiful. yeah so thank you for mentioning that you're welcome yeah absolutely it's a really important point so i'm looking forward to hearing your story <laughs> um but yeah, the second story, this is more deeply spiritual. So this, I, funny enough, it was also on another spiritual pilgrimage with my mentor. And actually, just to speak to that, because I'm realizing that, that that pattern, I never actually connected that before, but the, I, I'm aware of what is happening. But this is a really another amazing point to make, that if we want to actually create more of these deeper spiritual experiences, manifestations, creations of what we want, being with other like-minded people and being in their energy creates a really powerful vortex. And that energy vortex is incredibly powerful, more powerful than we are individually. We're much more powerful together. So that, that alone is really important. So with that said, I was also on another spiritual pilgrimage when this second manifestation happened. It was much more spiritual. It wasn't a physical thing that I was working on manifesting, but this time I was in Egypt. It was in 2020 or 2020, 2018, sorry, 2020, I went to Israel. So three different major spiritual Jeez. pilgrimages I went on. But so 2018, I went to Egypt and <laughs> we went on a, another two week pilgrimage and uh, it was another 50 of us and incredible experience. And I, I wanted to have a deeper experience with my own connection with God and know myself more as a spiritual being, not just conceptualize it, not just feel it in my body, but I, I wanted to actually have an out of body experience, which I never consciously had before. And I never actually created for myself. I had it once or twice, but it kind of just happened to me. I never felt like I created that experience myself. And so I had that intention going into this spiritual pilgrimage. And so again, another week and a half went by of, of the full two week pilgrimage. And in my mind, I was thinking like, when is this going to happen? <laughs> when is this going to happen? I was very focused on it. But this, in this story, the lesson was letting mm -hmm. go because the more I focused on it, the more I tried to make it happen, the less connected I felt like it was going to happen. So one of the last days we were there, we had the opportunity of going into the king's chamber, which is a small room, relatively small room in one of the great pyramids of Giza. 
And we had an opportunity to go inside to have this short 30 minute meditation. And I felt like that was the time it was going to happen. I had been setting this intention, preparing myself through my own meditations and knowing that this was possible because I'd read about astral travel and astral projection and that we are these spiritual beings. Like I knew that intellectually, but in this experience, we had like 30 minutes of meditation. It was completely pitch black in there. It was amazing. I mean, the energy of yeah. being in the pyramid was just gorgeous. But about 15, 20 minutes in, I noticed this pattern of myself over the last week and a half of, oh, I'm trying to make this happen and that's the problem. And so a big part of it was just letting go of not needing the experience to have it happen. And in that, I felt at first just a deep sense of peace that I didn't need it because what, what was it really even for? It wasn't, it was trying to prove something to myself. Right. And once I finally just let go and like felt like I don't need this actually, I'm, I'm okay with moving on, just allowing the experience to be what it is. That's when something happened. And I felt this, um, I, are you familiar with Kundalini energy, Tisha? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I felt like happened for me is like from the base of my spine, it felt like this energy rising up slowly at first, but once it hit the top of my head, I felt like I shot out of my body. I mean, I tech, I definitely did. And I was beyond our solar system. I don't even know where the hell I was in space. <laughs> I knew just I was surrounded by stars. There was no planet in sight. Oh. It was just like sparkling lights oh. everywhere. And it was maybe just a five or 10 second experience because as soon as I acknowledged and in my, like, in my own humanness was like, oh my God, it's happening. Boom, I dropped what? right back down into my body. So yeah, that was the other experience I had that was definitely, I mean, felt deeply spiritual and very connecting and knowing that I'm more, knowing that I'm part of this one thing that we call life, the universe, God, source, spirit. But it was the first real time that I had this experience where I opened up to and then created it myself. I co-created it really because that I felt like it was happening through me. I didn't make it happen. That is an amazing story. I was so with you. I was just, but I can't even imagine like projecting out of my body yet. I'm curious, do you feel like you can do the same thing in your living room or do you feel like you needed that energy in that space? Yeah. Mm, yeah. I see your clever to, to answer your question more clearly. Uh, yes, at that time, I think I did. I needed to have that space because especially being around the 30 others or so that were in the King's Chamber with me was awesome to have that, that meditation together. And I was just saying before, like the energy vortex you create with others that are like-minded. Um, but now as I've developed, because that's four years ago, four and a half years ago, I, I believe I can. Right. Not that I actually want to, though. That That's what going back to what we were speaking about before what and what my work I really feel like is in this lifetime is to help people ground their spirituality more in this human reality, yeah. because I think that's why we're here, you know? So it's great. And I've had other experiences, many other experiences like that, um, whether it was supported by others or it was on my own. Um, but truly it can, it can happen literally anywhere we want. So the I reason believe. why I said that specifically was so that people who, who can't, you know, travel to Egypt or Bali feel like they just, well, their opportunity is gone, right. right? So I just wanted to stress the point that it doesn't, the environment doesn't matter, but I understand what you're saying about the energy of being around like minded people. I, if I hadn't experienced that myself, I did a meditation retreat. And if I hadn't um, experienced what that energy felt like, my intuition was so off the charts in that environment that I, I don't know how I didn't explode <laughs> on site because it was like something I, <laughs> right. it was like yeah. something I've never experienced in my life before. So if anybody's listening and you've never done a retreat mm. or some kind of spiritual, you know, gathering of like-minded people, do it, do it now. Don't wait. Don't put it off. If it's two or three yes. days, do it. It's so such an experience worth experiencing. Definitely. I 100% agree. And that's why I went on those uh, now three two-week pilgrimages, which I mean, I again, very grateful and blessed to say I, I had the privilege and uh, means to do so. Right. But yeah, it's, it, it, you can go for a day, two days, three days. Like, But again, it's not absolutely needed. It does help though, for sure. Yeah. 
even just like talking to guests on the podcast is so satisfying because I immediately have a connection to someone I've never met before. I talk to him for a whole hour and then we're like, holy shit, an hour just passed by. And it's it's the most crazy thing ever. Yep. Like spiritual people are so cool in that aspect. And in most cases, like you have this like soul to soul conversation and it's so different than talking to like regular people. <laughs> yep. A hundred percent. I agree. It's a, ble a beautiful thing, really. And I thank God for technology that we can yeah, do oh, this, you know? a thousand percent. And especially people from all different um, mindsets, I think is so interesting. Like some people I've talked to have PhDs and they're super focused on exactly just one thing. Um, but that's why I'm having such a great time talking to you because you're like me and that you're sort of all over the place and have like interest in this and that and this and then putting it all together. Like you don't follow just a, you know, Buddhist or you yes. don't follow just this or you take what what you need from right. each place and bring it together to make your life make sense. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's uh, maybe not what we're meant to do, but it feels the best for me at least. So I feel like that's my soul's path. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Did it take you some time back in the day when you first kind of started on your more serious spiritual path? Did it take you a lot of back and forth about, am I crazy? Or is this, you know, being a human, being a spirit, being human, being spirit? Like, can you talk just a little bit about that wobble? Because I, I've been through it and it's really hard. And I'm just, I yes. want to hear someone else's perspective of it. It is. Sure, I'd be happy to share that. And that's so important to discuss because I, I think I said this before very briefly in some other part of our conversation that it's a challenge and it it always mm -hmm. is. And I think that's true because if we're going to wake up to our true nature of who we are, there's a lot of shit we got to mm -hmm. unlearn and realize was false patterning or programming that we received just as being human, like being born on this planet and being raised by other humans that were maybe not as conscious or aware of their spiritual nature. And so, yes, it's a challenge, but I, I think it's also in the process of integrating it into our own experience as a wobble. And I actually think the word you used wobble is mm -hmm. perfect because a great analogy that has helped me understand that that's normal to have the wobble is learning how to ride a mm -hmm. bike. When you take the training wheels off and you start going on your own, there is naturally a wobble. So very normal. So my, my experience though with the wobble, if we yeah. can call it that, is um, it started when I first started to go down this path of self-development. And that was in around 2013. It was actually before I left pharmacy school. So I felt like I was completely <laughs> nuts because I started to get so interested in these different ways of viewing life. And none of my friends really were interested at all. I tried to share it with them and they were like, what the hell are you talking about, Kevin? That's like, again, woo-woo. You used that term before, which is why I definitely want to check out that yeah. book. But yeah, the woo-woo. So um, that, that to me was like really challenging. But the thing that helped me out the most, which I think is the most important thing to talk about in that mm -hmm. wobble, because we all go through challenges. Um, for me, what helped me out the most was staying connected with messages that spoke to yes. what I felt like the truth. So for me, at, at the time, it was reading books and listening to YouTube videos. Those are the two outlets that I had back in 2013. Now, again, God bless technology. We have so much more opportunity to stay connected, like through podcasts like your own, through my own podcast, but there's t you know a million, one different, maybe not a million, but thousands probably of podcasts like this one. But still, you find one that resonates with you, stay connected. That's that's also why I stay connected with my mentor. Even though I now feel very solid and, and confident in my knowing of what life is for me and my own spiritual nature and all that, I still stay connected because still there are times that I may doubt my path or have a challenge or struggle. And that's just the human nature, the human experience. And so staying connected in some way to something that resonates with you, whether it's a person, a podcast, a, a teacher, mentor, books, whatever resonates most. Yeah, I say that connected. a lot. Um, someone will ask, like, how are you doing? I'm feeling very human today. So then I'll go put on a, yeah, I'll put on a documentary. <laughs> I, I realized um, not very long ago that I need this stuff. I need to listen to other people talk about this journey. Um, 
So I feel better. I feel more aligned. I remember where I came from. And it's like pretty often that I have to do that. You know, it's like, I know, I know, but then I forget. And so I need those people to constantly remind yep. me over and over. And I used to think that was a personal defect. Um, I've just recently come to accept that that's Ooh. just part of the journey. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it is. It really is a part of the journey. And once the beautiful thing is once you accept that and realize it's not a flaw or not something that is wrong with you and feeling like, oh, like, am I not really aligned or getting this right on my spiritual journey? It's like, no, that's, that's you being a human and that's okay. Yes. And it's so crazy that someone has to sort of tell you it's okay to be a human, right? Like, how many people I see forgetting spirituality completely, but how many people have don't understand how the ego works and how many people don't understand basic. Mm, right. Oh, here's your science stuff, like basic science stuff about how your body reacts to those things and the dopamine surges and how it affects your, your life. This might be a little TMI for you, but I'm going to say it anyway. I went through early menopause at 38. And so my hormones were a disaster for 10 years. And little teeny tiny chemical wow. messengers fucked up my life for 10 years. And it gave me an appreciation for how sure. much stuff is going on inside that will change your health mentally, physically, you know. Yeah, it was bad. Yes. <laughs> Wow. Well, I appreciate you for sharing. To me, it's not too much information at all. Like it's just your journey, right? And it gives it show it gives evidence to the power of knowing your own body, your own physiology, your own human equipment. Yeah. Literally. Well, I see now why I had to go through all of that suffering um to come out where I am. I can understand I'm very good at like doing the hindsight thing and saying, oh, well, I had to go through that to get here. Um, thank God I, it comes to me naturally because that's got to be the hardest part, I think, for people to to grasp that kind of thing, that redirection. Yeah. But once you start thinking of life and its challenges Definitely. as a redirection, things are so much easier. Like so, There's so much less anger and all of that negative shit that – why aren't people doing this? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, because I, I think people aren't doing because it it's a challenge yeah. for sure. But the results on the other side of going through the difficulty is far greater than any of that challenge that you face when you're going through it. For sure. I, that's, I've seen that. I mean, I experienced that dozens, if not hundreds of times in my own life. Yeah. Well, I think... So I feel like I'm on the other side of some really bad years, finally. Um, and those years were so... That's beautiful. That's awesome. Let, let's hope. <laughs> I am I mean, I know. I'm not going to hope. I know that I am on yeah. the other side of the back side of that. But again, I couldn't probably do the show if I wasn't willing to talk about the dark side of that, the the bad side, because... It's hearing other people talk about those struggles that makes me go, oh, it's not just me. Like, it's amazing how many people still feel like shit happening to them. Yeah, it's just definitely. them, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, I think the, the term that comes to my mind is like representation matters. And I know that's usually used in terms of like body positivity or gender equality or anything like that. But representation matters as well in terms of knowing that struggle is a part of being human. And especially waking up as a spiritual being yeah. in this human experience. So, yeah, representation matters. Stories matter. Our story matters. Your yeah. story matters. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we. That's why we do this. Like, we're we're not making millions off this yet, yet. But we show up every week because that one person who says, "Oh my God, that resonated for me so much." is that's all you need to just keep moving forward. You know, I'm, I'm sure you feel that way too. Exactly. So. Yes, definitely. It's just about making that impact in one purpose, one person's life. That's what oh, matters the most sure. really. Any parting words of wisdom? Mm. I think 
the one parting word of wisdom I'd share is to relax into a process of transformation, whatever you're working on transforming, whether that's transforming an illness or having a challenge in a relationship you're wanting to evolve or uh, having a challenge in waking up to your own spiritual nature. I think to honor your journey and to be at peace with knowing that it is, it is a process is so important. And it's kind of like, it feels like an undertone of everything we've talked about that if we could have more peace and more calmness, knowing that what we're going through is, is normal and that we're not doing something wrong or, or actually like, you know, messing it up or like feeling like we're, we need yeah. something else that we have really all we need right here in this moment that makes it immensely easier to go through whatever we're going through. So, uh, I feel like that's the one thing I wanted to consciously say, even though we were kind of talking about that already. So. Yeah. And I'll just add that, like, you may not get it on the first try, but like that consistency, if something slightly resonates for you and you just kind of keep pursuing it and pursuing it and holy shit, when it starts to make sense, it it's so magical. I can't explain it any other word. Like there's no other better word for it. I think than magical. Right? Yes. Magic is definitely a great word. I love using that word to, to it because honestly, it really does feel like magic. Because I, I like to say my favorite phrase is that I don't make things happen. I make things welcome oh. by means of the work that I do spiritually. Oh, that's very good. I'm going to remember that, I think, <laughs> for sure. It's the, Sweet. It's those yeah. little, um, I call them brain zingers because it's those things that I hear in a different way. Like you could probably say that 50 other ways, but that will be the one that I remember. And I've literally, like my whole path is littered with mm. all those zingers that just stuck right when I needed it to so that I could nice. like take the next step forward. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. I, I My mind is like a steel trap for those like quotes or simple sayings that really help. So I definitely resonate with that too. When I first started this podcast, my actually my concept was that people say all of these things over and over. Like you hear, I can't even think of one off the top of my head, but they say these quotes, but nobody actually knows what they mean. And so part of what I wanted to do was mm. actually like sort of dissect those things. I, I cannot think of an example off the top of my head, but like someone will say sure. a word that everybody hears all the time. And then I'll be like, well, what does that exactly mean? Because, you know, people say this shit, but they don't explain what it means. So we we dealt with that a lot early For on. Sure. And I still like dissecting things like that. That's awesome. It's definitely important because yeah, these things can be just come become just cliches or just sayings that people will say, but don't really get the deeper meaning of it. So that's awesome. Exactly. You're doing that. Exactly. Well, I thank you. There has been a bit of a delay between us speaking. So when I go back and edit this podcast, if anybody thinks it sounds a little strange in some parts, it's just because my editing skills <laughs> left it that way. Um, but I want to thank you, Kevin, so much for agreeing to talk to me this evening. And I'll let you listen You're welcome. to welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. Of course. And for everybody else listening, I hope that you've learned a little something about yourself and feel inspired to keep learning. Remember, new episodes of Slightly Unmeditated drop every Thursday. And you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your favorite podcast. You can reach out on the website at slightlyunmeditated.com, Facebook, or Instagram with any questions, comments, or ideas. And until we meet again, I am sending you all positive energy and sincere gratitude. I am Tisha, and I will always be slightly unmeditated. <laughs>